Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to a Retro Waffle channel update, a few pickups and there's a few reasons what's inspired me to do this video and um, first of all is an apology. Um, I've started a bit of a, a trend here on the revival videos and that's that I'm calling Craig's here again Rob. Apologies for that Craig. I don't know what on earth was going on before I shot that video. I was um, chatting on Retro Realm admin chat and you was being discussed and Rob. So I got the two of you muddled up. Apologies for that, Craig. Um, but you will forever be known as Rob to me. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Craig. Rob. Um, yeah, that's the first thing. I just wanted to set that straight because it had caused absolute confusion on some of the pickups videos because everyone was calling poor Craig Rob. So there you go, that sorted that out. And the second reason for this video is, let me just grab it. I've got a mystery box. What's in the box? I have no idea what this is. So we're gonna open this on camera because I haven't done that in a while and it's quite fun. I do enjoy doing that. Um, but one of the main reasons is the topic I want to talk about and since the busy weekend revival this week's been a bit of a dull week to be honest I've been job hunting um, applying for jobs job interviews all of that really boring stuff I've been doing that and to be quite honest I've been the house husband doing all the chores doing all that and to break up some of the monotony and also some of the jobs that I've been wanting to do for six months plus since we moved house and um, I've been going through the list and you're thinking what the hell has this got to do with Sega Zombie your channel what's going on well um, I was clearing the garage and you know you guys will know if you move house you always have those boxes that go in your garage or your attic or your loft or your basement that you just never get round to sorting and like I said we've, we've been moved since November last year and I've got a number of boxes that fits that category you know they're just boxes that I've not sorted and the missus has been nagging to get these things done so I've been sorting out the garage and making it more of a usable space and I've been clearing boxes and in doing so I stumbled across the family um, Nintendo Wii and my son sort of like, we haven't used it for a couple of years at least, and my son was like really young when we used to have that set up and play it regularly, and he was really intrigued and wanted to play some Nintendo Wii. So I sorted through loads of boxes. We found um, a Nintendo, well, about three or four Nintendo Wiis, loads of controllers, probably where I've just picked them up in bundles and all that sort of thing over the years. And um, I cleaned them up, sorted them out, and we, we set them up to see if they worked. And do you know what? Me and my son have spent quality time together really blasting loads of Nintendo Wii games. And I'm not gonna be ashamed to admit it, we have had a right blast. This week has been really great. He's been getting home from school. We've been going up there and just playing loads of games. Now, I had loads of accessories, hardware, consoles, Wii Fit boards. Um, and the only games I'd kept was we had some Wii Fit games or Wii Sports, that kind of rubbish, and um, Mario Kart. So, you know, after playing a few rounds of that, we got a little board. And I said, I know what I'll do. I'll clean up what's, you know, what I don't need. And I took them to CEX um, to get some games that we'd enjoy. And I'll tell you what, we have really had a blast with some of these games. Some I haven't played yet, some I have. So this is a very... Nintendo Alex inspired video I know it's not yet the SNES um, or Super Nintendo video that I've been promising but that is coming there's going to be a new series all on the 16-bit wars and we're going to go through it me being a Super Nintendo newbie I'm going to give my Sega take on some Nintendo stuff but that is for a future video this video is Nintendo it's about that chuck away shovelware system that is the Nintendo Wii but I tell you what it's been a blast guys 
And I went in, I took a load of Wii motes and all the rubbish, you know what it is, what you take in to trade at CEX, and I traded it in for some games for me and the lad to play. So this first bundle is all from CEX and what I got from the credit. First up, we've got, excuse the stickers guys, we've got Resident Evil, The Dark Side Chronicles. Now I can remember playing this back on its release because I love the Resident Evil games and I love light gun games and so does my lad. And he does enjoy playing retro, but he gets his attention span, leaves it quickly. We'll play a game of Streets Rage 2 or Turtles or something like that together. And after a while, he just gets bored, which is a real shame. And I'm hoping as he gets older, he does get into the retro. But um, yeah, we're loving these gun games at the moment. We haven't played this one yet, but like I said, played it back in the day. It's all in great condition. I have no idea on value, but it, it was a fiver. So five pounds worth of credit. To me, it's like, it's free, you know. This stuff was sitting in the garage for so long, it owes me nothing. Next up, Sega-inspired stuff here. We've got Sega Bass Fishing. I know, I've got the Dreamcast, the rod version, but for 75p, it's just nice to have it. It's a Sega title, and just put that with our Wii games. And next up is a really good one, and this, is, this was the one game I wanted out of all of these. This was the main game, and that is Ghost Squad. Again, one pound. And uh, Ghost Squad, I don't know if you guys have played it, but it's absolutely a fantastic game. I believe it's the last game um, AM2 released on a home console. So that gives it some historical sort of like reference. But this is a glorious game. I love this game in the arcades. But it's even better on the Wii. There's so many options, so much replayability, different ways you can do the routes, you could get different costumes, guns. Honestly, guys, for one pound, this is a blast. And me and my lad, we played this a whole evening of just laughing, the cheesy acting and voiceovers. You know, typical um, light gun affair, but it's absolutely rocking. And this is an awesome game on the Wii. So there is great games out there guys and I'm really chuffed to get that one. Next up we've got um, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles which was the first in the series of these light gun games. Again in absolutely fantastic condition and £3.50. Bloody bargain that. Um, again following the theme of just getting the Sega ports and we've got Sam D'Amigo 75 pence, you can't grumble at that. This one's got no manual, which I was a bit gutted about, but I'm sure at that price it will turn up again, guys. Um, and then we've got Knights. I've never ever played this on the Nintendo Wii, um, so I'm really looking forward to playing it. I've heard it's nowhere near as good as the original Saturn version, but you know, it's Knights. I want to give it a blast. It's done by Sonic Team. So, you know, it's got to be half decent game. And for £1.50, you know, I think now is the time to start grabbing some of this stuff because it literally is pennies we're spending here. So it's great. Um, so as you can see, the inspiration is kicking off on, um, on Nintendo Wii. And there's so many games that I've picked up this week. This is just this week I've picked these up, guys. Um, to break up some of the boredom and monotony, if I'm not clearing the garage, I'm on top of the housework. Um, I've got an hour or two to kill before picking the kids up from school. I've been going around charity shops and we've been laughing on um, Retro Realm Admin behind the scenes. I've put a couple of pictures up in the groups laughing as well. I had a disastrous few days trying to, you know, just travel around the charity shops and see what I can get. In the groups, you get people putting up absolutely fantastic finds they find in second-hand and charity shops, putting posts up of all these fantastic treasure troves of bargains they find, retro bargains they find in charity shops and second-hand shops. And I'm like, I want a piece of this pie. I want some of this. So I went round uh, my town centre and I visited a load of charity shops. And my goodness, I think it was eight charity shops and um, just to split it up from the Nintendo Wii. I'm gonna go in order of the charity shops I went in. This first day, it was it was feeble to be honest guys. I picked up some original Xbox games. 
And first up we've got Prisoner of War. You know, and the reason I'm picking these up, again, it's 50p. These were 50p each. So Prisoner of War, I have no idea about this game and whether it's any good. I obviously had the original Xbox um, back in the day and had loads of games, but never played this one. Um, it's a Code Masters game. So it's got to be half decent, isn't it, man? 50 pence, guys, 50 pence. And then again, we've got another 50p, and this was from the same shop, Pro Evolution 4. No more really to be said about football there. And this is a game I actually had on the GameCube, and I can remember me and my mates really liking the co-op play of this game back in the day. And that is Freedom Fighters. So really chuffed to get that for 50p. And I will give this another playthrough. So, not a great haul, and I did get the piss take after visiting eight charity shops. These were all out of one charity shop for 50p each. So there you go, there's those. Obviously, none of this stuff's gonna be flipped. It's all just to go in the collection or trade, maybe, if something better comes along. Um, but yeah, no, this is all to go in the collection, really, guys. Um, because I, I want to get more Sega games on the more modern consoles um, because that's something I've never ever really focused on and I really have been inspired um, finding this Wii and how much fun we've all had playing it so um, next up um, I had a visit into our um, local charity shops and I stumbled across we've got two local ones one sort of like big distribution centre that has loads of stuff in it and then a smaller one next to the supermarket, our local supermarket. Um, yeah, and I picked up um, these two from the little place. And these were one pound each. And these are for my son. These aren't for me. He absolutely adores Call of Duty. So I thought I'd get him that for the Wii. So he can play that. Um, this one looks like it's got an interesting control um, technique using the remote and um, the nunchuck in the actual gun itself um, he was playing this last night and having a blast and quite enjoyed it he was laughing at the poor graphics <laughs> i know that but yeah he seemed to have fun on that and one pound one pound what can you buy your kids for a pound these days not a lot and then secondly i got him this just as a joke and i got him a horse racing game g1 jockey for wii so again, one pound. Um, yeah, he couldn't figure out how to control that game. <laughs> but you know, he enjoyed Call of Duty. Um, and then I went to the bigger um, charity, sort of like, like a district, big huge drop-in centre. They had a massive warehouse just full of cloth, loads of junk and all that sort of stuff to go through. And I actually enjoyed going through some of that, to be honest. There was some great sort of like, non-game related stuff in there, just had a look. And they had a lot of televisions, which really interested me. I was looking at them for loads, seeing what kind of inputs they had, because I'm looking to upgrade the um, the small screen TV I've got in my games um, display, um, in my games all set up on the counter over there. I have quite a small um, LCD screen, which I have my Dreamcast running through VGA on and my Amiga, and I'm looking to get a better television. It's one of these cheap, unheard of makes. And unless you're sitting in the right angle, you don't see the picture very well. And um, I've just set the Nintendo Wii up on it for my lad to play, and it just looks absolutely jank. It looks terrible, so I'm looking to get another TV. And they had a few interesting ones in there, um, which I might go back at a later date and see if I can get one of those. But I'm waffling again, guys. I'm sidetracked here. Um, in this charity shop, these were all £2 each. I hand-picked what I thought were the better titles. And we've got Super Paper Mario. Um, I can remember playing this game not on the Nintendo Wii, I don't think. I think I played this originally on the GameCube or like one of the Paper Mario games on that, on that system. And I really enjoyed it, actually. It's one of the uh, Marios I have enjoyed. Um, and my lad is looking forward to playing this one over the weekend. And this, this sells in um, 
CEX for about five or six pounds, I think. So two pound, brilliant. And then I picked up Super Mario Galaxy, which we all need know this game. Apparently an amazing game. These games I've not really played on the Wii, to be honest. Um, the Wii console to me was always like a family orientated console that we had set up in our living room, like most people. And we just had the run of the mill games, but I've never really got into the Galaxy games. One day I might give them a blast, but again, two pounds, I thought that was worth picking up. And then a game I'm really interested in, me and my lad. I don't know if he can play this one. He's not quite old enough yet. And the language is pretty bad. And that is um, House of the Dead Overkill. Really enjoyed this game on the PlayStation 3. I've never played the Wii version, so really looking forward to giving that a blast because it was originally released on the Nintendo Wii. Um, it was two pounds, it's got no manual, which I'm a bit gutted about that, but two pounds, I weren't gonna let it sit on the shelf for that kind of money. So, House of the Dead Overkill. And then again, another Sega game, and we got Sonic um, and the Black Knight. And again, this is a Sonic game, guys, that I've never played. I played the Sonic game on the Nintendo Wii, which was, um, was it something Rings? I can't remember the name of it. The one that was sort of like in a sort of like a fairy tale sort of scenario environment. Um, Lost Book of Rings or something like that. I had that game. Um, I remember getting that on um, release. And we also had Sonic Colours. I can remember that, but I've never played this one. I'd imagine it's going to be the typical 3D Sonic affair, nothing um, fancy there. Um, but I can remember really enjoying Sonic Colours on the Wii, which is one that I need to get. And then I had to do it again. House of the Dead. We've got House of the Dead 2 and 3 Returns. This had to be done, guys, you know. Got to be done. This one is all complete with manual. And again, two pounds. So. I thought that was a great load of games there for a tenner. So my Wii library already is starting to look quite good. And me and my son, we've got loads of games to play after school next week and over the weekend. Um, one other game actually I did get, a um, Nintendo Wii game, was I um, when I come out of CEX, I should have done this one before the charity shop stuff, um, there's a uh, cash converters close by. So I thought I'll just nip in there, have a look. Um, and yeah, I picked up this one for three pounds. And that is Batman the Brave and the Bold, the video game. Again, it was two player. I wanted to get it for something for me and my lad again to play together. And do you know what? This game is awesome. We played this an awful lot um, yesterday. Um, as soon as he'd finished school. Um, we went and got the treats and sweets. The kids, uh, the girls watched a f um, and had a movie. And me and my lad, we played this. And what an absolutely great little game. This is a, like a hidden gem, really, on the, on the Nintendo Wii. Anyone else played this game? It's fantastic. Side-scrolling action platformer, beat em up. Um, in the vein of some of the earlier 16-bit Batman games. And... Um, you know, well, I know the Wii is criticised for not having the greatest graphics and things like that, but it really suits this sort of cartoon style. Um, my lad remembers the cartoon, he really enjoyed the cartoon of this. And, you know, it just flawlessly goes from a cutscene sort of cartoon into the gameplay, and we really did enjoy playing this game. And I can't wait to play this some more, actually. Out of a lot of these games, this was the game I, I really did enjoy, so... Um, that was that's it of Nintendo Wii. I won't bore you all with any more Nintendo Wii, but let me know in comments, guys, what games I should be looking for, what specifically games that me and my lad can play together. I think I've got some good games there. Let me know what you think of these games, guys, if you've played them, especially the Batman. And um, yeah, Batman and Ghost Squad, I'd say, are the pick of those games, because obviously I've got the House of the Dead games on um, the Dreamcast original Xbox. Sega Mr. Trick as they often did there. Why didn't they do the House of the Dead collection and put the first game on there? That would have been absolutely fantastic. I can remember thinking that at the time actually when that was released. Why didn't they have all of the House of the Dead? That would have been brilliant. 
Um, so that's it for the games. And I promised in my revival video was that I was going to um, show off a book. And this is a book I got, and um, it's an absolutely fantastic read, guys. And that is The Fantasy Art of Oliver Frey. Now, I can remember growing up in the early 80s, mid 80s, or into the 90s, Crash Magazine and the likes. This guy's artwork featured heavily on loads of stuff. I'm sure lots of you guys um, know about Oliver Frey. Um, starting out in the comics and, and going in through the 80s into loads of game cover art and the like. And this is an absolutely fantastic read. Get over to um, Fusion Books, guys. Um, because they're doing this for an absolute bargain. This was like £4 posted. And it's a glorious hardback. Um, it's got the, the, slip, the slip sleeve on it with a different cover underneath, which I really like that. And it's just such a really well put together book. I've highlighted a few pages here. I've bookmarked a few pages just to show you and just ones that the memories come flooding back being wild going into my local news agents and seeing that just bouncing off the magazine shelf. That is, uh, the memories come flooding back. I can remember going into my local news agents, picking up the Beano and then seeing that on the shelf and just being like, wow, I have got to get that. So I remember that picture really fondly, guys. And then these also, these jumped out. I can remember being absolutely amazed by the alien sort of inspired one there with the, the Sinclair Spectrum 48 Ks as its eyes. And there was lots of movie sort of inspired ones as well. Absolutely amazing. And the memories just come flooding back. I, I love to draw and um, I'm in nowhere near these standards, but um, I used to love drawing as a kid. Um, doing comics and, and as I got older got into painting and this guy's art is really great and I can remember I was really inspired by a lot of this guy's uh, work and it just looks fantastic the memories come flooding back look at that spaceships landing and then the Amstrad spectrum just looks absolutely fantastic again this one I love the spaceship of Cybernoid and the artwork is just bloody fantastic, awesome. And then I can remember actually drawing this one and um, I can remember being in sort of like middle school or whatever junior school and I can remember sitting there trying to copy this picture because I've always had a fascination with horror, hence Sega Zombie I suppose. And when I was young, I loved the Hammer Horror films. I can remember my mum and dad taping on their top loader VHS. And they, would, they used to tape in the early hours overnight. And they used to tape me and record like the old Hammer Horror films. And oh, I loved it. I used to sit there watching them. And you know, this, this, this picture just brings that flooding back of all them great times of watching Hammer Horror films and trying to draw Dracula and Werewolf and absolutely amazing and again sort of like some later horror but I can remember really loving the uh, sort of like Jason Voorhees Friday the 13th artwork there so that was another one that jumped out and this whole book just non-stop loads of movie inspired and horror images and just everything it's absolutely fantastic guys and I highly recommend you go out and grab this book at the price. It's just absolutely brilliant. This is like a really bargain, bargain priced edition of, of the Sega wall. Um, but yeah, not intentional guys, but absolutely um, amazing book. And if you can grab it, I highly recommend it, especially if you grew up in that era and, and Crash Magazine and the likes. And with that artwork, it's absolutely fantastic. Right, so that's the pickups, guys. And um, we've got a what's in the box to do. Here we go, guys. Now, I had no idea what this was. I um, did start to open it because I thought it was something else. Um, and then I see that it wasn't that, so I stopped straight away. So the tape is split. 
But let's see what's in the box, guys. See, look, I haven't done all the tape. <laughs> right, that's got it. Yeah, as soon as I see this note and see this, oh, we've got a note in here. I see a note in there and I thought, hold on, then what is this? So I'm now gonna read out the note. Keep up the great work. Always look forward to your videos. I hope you enjoy the package and keep it Sega. Lots of love, Retro Faith. Awesome Faith. I knew um, Faith recently won a raffle on Modern Realm um, that me and David Jamison had done. And I used that opportunity because unfortunately Faith couldn't make it to Revival and I had some little Sonic bits for her. So I sent that with her raffle win and she said that she was going to send me a SNES pad because she watched my Revival video and see um, that I'd got a Super Nintendo but needed a pad. Um, unfortunately the pad I've got for a pound, yeah, it was worth a pound to be quite honest guys. It, it's awful. Um, it's very unresponsive. So I've not really been able to get my teeth into the Super Nintendo yet, Alex, unfortunately. Um, so that's all I knew. She said, I'm going to send you a pad. So let's see what's in this box, shall we, guys? Loads of bubble wrap. Oh, what is this? So we've got Dreamcast Passport Discs. Look at that. Oh, and it's got a picture on there of the Dreamcast Diver TV set. Look at that. Oh, that's fantastic. Awesome, thank you, Faith. And then we've got in there the dream, another Dreamcast Passport disc here. I love all this stuff, it's amazing. And I haven't got any of this, Faith, that's brilliant. So another one there that I can add with all the Dreamcast stuff. And then we've got ESPN on the Xbox. I haven't got this one either, Faith. That is absolutely brilliant. And like you, I know you've just recently finished your um, Sega sort of exclusives on the Xbox. And I've sort of like slowly been chipping away doing the same thing on the original Xbox. So I'm well chuffed with that. That is bloody brilliant. Thank you, Faith. Awesome. Wow. What else have we got in here? If I can get to it. No freaking way, what is this? Oh, we've got something in here as well. Oh, awesome. A VMU, I, I, I always need VMUs. I play so many games on the Dreamcast that my VMUs just get used up, so that is bloody brilliant, thank you. An official rumba, rumble pack. I've actually misplaced my official one of these, so that's bloody awesome. Um, I've got a few sort of third party ones, but to have an official one is always great. Thank you again. Wow, this is a right box of treasures in here. And what is this? No way. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my goodness. Not only has Faith sent me a, an official Super Nintendo pad, which is absolutely bloody brilliant. So um, my 16-bit Wars videos are going to be coming along really soon. Wow, that is bloody awesome. She's not only done that, but she's sent me a Super Nintendo arcade stick. Boom! Oh my God, Faith, that is absolutely fucking brilliant. Christ, I'm chuffed sick with that. Do you know what? I've never ever seen an arcade stick on a Super Nintendo. I tell a lie, I see them really, really beautiful um, arcade sticks, modern arcade sticks, on Alex and Jay Cybersnake's channel. But I've never seen one of those before. Re oh, I can't wait to give this a blast. I'm speechless, I don't know what to say. Wow, that is absolutely bloody fantastic. Thank you so much, Faith. This is gonna go down an absolute storm in um, doing some of my Super Nintendo videos. And I really can't wait to get stuck in now. Um, I was playing um, Super Punch-Out. I absolutely love that game. That game's brilliant, but I was getting so annoyed because this one pound pad that I got, this third party pad was absolutely shit. And it, you know, it's just so unresponsive. So to be able to play with an arcade stick, 
and an official pad. Wow, I am absolutely blown away by that. Thank you so much, Faith. Oh, I just love this community. I absolutely love the retro scene. Oh, I just don't know what to say. I'm speechless there. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, guys. Like I said, it was like an inspiration of clearing the garage. And, you know, it's, it's panned out my gaming week so far. So until the next time, I'm Sega Zombie. Goodbye.